Knuckles thinks he's crazy. Instead of explaining why Chow can help, he gets offended and they fight. You sure proved him wrong. Silver must have been holding back the whole fight because you'd think he would have easily killed Knuckles or sent him to the hospital because of his psychokinesis. I love Rouge's line here. If it doesn't glitter, it isn't gold to me. Espio states the obvious that the Chow is sitting on the Chaos Emerald. Him stating the obvious implies that he only just now noticed this, which makes me wonder how people didn't notice that before. Is a Chow really big enough to hide an entire Chaos Emerald just by sitting on it? No. How can a Chaos Emerald stand on its own instead of toppling over when a Chow tries to sit on it? That wouldn't hide it, the Chow would just be sitting on top of it and everyone would see the Emerald right below it. Unless the Emerald was in front of a little hill. Then they would only see the Chow. They'd have to walk ahead a few steps and then they would see what he was commenting on. And he says that if she follows him, Silver can get the other Chow. Silver says that since he trusted him, he'll tell him what's going on. But he thought he trusted him before. So why didn't he tell him this immediately? And he's in a confrontational pose even though he's not angry with him or about to attack him. Why did he say he looked like he was about to rant at him? Eggman Negus shows up and sends his deadly machine after him. That really shouldn't stop him from explaining the rest of it, considering that it would only take a few seconds for Silver to say the Ifrit needs a sacrifice. When Knuckles and Rouge show up, Silver says that he can take them all on. Why can't they work together? He has to know that he gets the same person. After Knuckles tries to get Eggman to tell him where the Master Emerald is, even though he should know that Effort is doomed from the start, Silver tells him to shut up. Why does Silver need to talk to him? It's such a clearly futile effort, and there's no reason Silver can't just talk to him while Knuckles and Rouge are there. Rouge complains about him taking that tone with us, even though we only said that to Knuckles, and his tone really wasn't that harsh. Eggman and Egg actually lampshades this unnecessary conflict. And again, I have to assume that the reason Silver doesn't just fly up to Eggman Nega with his powers is that he knows that he could just fly up in the Eggmobile and he doesn't want to run out of power and fall because his meter became empty. Because he assumes the Eggmobile can fly up faster than he can fly up. After all, it was made for dealing with Sonic. Knuckles complains that Eggman vanished. It's weird to see a tough guy like him saying Drat. It's pretty repetitive how at the start of multiple levels in a row, you have the characters in every storyline complaining that Eggman got away from them without them being able to chase after him somehow. Knuckles tells Rouge to try using the detector by that cactus, and she's rude to him for no reason. Concentrate on what? It sounds a little weird hearing someone like Shadow say, hey, and handy. Maybe he's loosening up. I can't tell you why. It makes absolutely no sense for Shadow to be keeping this confrontational from his best friend. And expects nothing bad to happen when he just asks her the question all suspicious like. Oh, actually he does trust her. Why does he say the key to opening that portal is the seven chaos emeralds? Isn't it the Chow? I love that he doesn't explain to her what the Ifrit is or that's threatening the world. Great writing there. Won't she just ask what the Ifrit is? Why would she agree to look for jewels just to give them away? Shadow asks her who hired her, and she gives him a taste of his own medicine. Rouge is smart enough to try to manipulate Knuckles into wanting to help by saying you might even have the Master Emerald. And Rouge didn't need to manipulate him. He would have wanted to save the world anyways. Then Eggman Nega shows up. What is it with the characters in this game and uncharacteristically wanting to defeat the villains all by themselves? Now here's the alternate scenes that you can find from playing the other storylines here. Sonic talks as if the only thing Eggman's good at is running away, and not inventing stuff. Tails finds another page from Eggman Nega's book. Tails reads the page and says the Ifrit destroyed the entire, and that's it. So it wasn't written by someone who was in the world that was being destroyed. Maybe that person escaped that world. Usually world's the only word used in that context. Well, that's a bland response. Yep, this thing is definitely part of the plot, alright. I like the Tails is happy to see both of them. Rouge says that they need rings, and asks Sonic and Tails for help. So Sonic agrees. So that's nice. 
Silver's exhausted, and Espio wonders what's going on. I guess he showed up before he said that, separating from him for some reason. Silver explains something to him while inexplicably no longer being tired. So why didn't he tell him this earlier? It's so easy to forget that the Ifrit plans on becoming invincible by absorbing those Chow. And of course, he doesn't explain why that makes sense. So we're left with a weird plot that will confuse a lot of people. Just because they have magic in them doesn't mean it makes sense that they become invincible from eating them. Because it's not like Chow are invincible, because they hate being abused. I can understand it becoming more powerful when it comes to the abilities that it has, but why would it become invincible? Even Chaos isn't invincible. Incredible? That's not exactly the right response to that. He sounds impressed. Like, it's going to eat my cat? Incredible! Silver says he needs some rings to power himself up. Since when did Silver's powers run on rings? I don't remember collecting rings making it fill it up faster. Every other character has their special abilities have an infinite amount of energy, but not Silver. It's good to have him be balanced considering he's the most overpowered character next to Shadow. I wish this was in the comic though, because then it would make sense that he doesn't use telekinesis at every opportunity. But I can't assume that it's the case in IDW because I'm pretty sure the writers haven't seen this. One of those writers didn't even see his gameplay in 06. Of course they wouldn't have seen an obscure cutscene. The two of them hear Rouge asking Sonic to round up some rings and decide to go after Sonic and Tails. Very sneaky doesn't really explain it. Why does he think it's going to backfire on him if he doesn't tell him the truth immediately? Why did Gerald Robotnik have files on interdimensional beasts that destroyed a dimension? How and why did he research that? He just knew everything the plot needed him to. It makes me glad that he's not referenced anymore. Why are they making Joe Robotnik know everything? How did he have the time to research all of this on his own when the military wouldn't have known about the Ifrit? And the funding to invent things that weren't weapons they didn't need? Asbio shows up and tells Sonic that he needs the rings before taking them, but he doesn't explain why, although that is faster. But all he'd have to say is, Silver is exhausted, instead of provoking him into bothering him. So it wouldn't take any time to explain things to him. And here's Silver's biggest out-of-character moment. Why would he call him a half-pint? Sonic complains about the thieves wondering where they went, and Eggman Nega shows up. Why is he asking if he's talking about him? Again, he decides to send his machine after him. Then Silver shows up, telling Sonic and Tails to step aside because he needs to talk to him first. For no reason. And Sonic doesn't humor him for no reason. Isn't he supposed to be a good person? This is the most repetitive plot in all of Sonic. When Shadow tells Eggman that Rouge was hired by someone to find emeralds, Eggman says it must be Eggman Nega. That sounds like jumping to conclusions. Shadow would have told her that Eggman Nega turned her into a card. Why would you think he would hold up his end of the bargain? Rouge is supposed to be smart. This isn't a mystery we have to know the answer to. Eggman Nega says, you know too much. You know, this would only make sense if Rouge didn't know it was Eggman Nega. Silver gets his strength back. He should have been able to do anything to Tails with no strength. Someone exhausted wouldn't expend the effort of calling someone a half pint. So in the next level, Eggman warns Shadow that the signal will break up when he gets into the mansion. But since Shadow already knows everything he needs to know, it doesn't matter. I'll head there from here too. Metal Sonic is doing all the work, and Eggman's not even controlling him. Why is he saying that he's the one heading there and not the robot who actually is? Shadow says he has a bad feeling about the mansion, implying that after all the unique level themes in the Rivals games, they're just going to recycle Mystic Mansion all over again. Why is Shadow afraid of ghosts? Isn't he supposed to be more confident than that? Intercept is such a vague term. He's not telling him exactly what to do after he goes to them. Why didn't he react that way to Metal Sonic the last time he saw him instead of just calling him an outdated machine? He chooses now to be intimidated by him? He has psychokinesis! He could just tear him apart! It's pretty sweet of him to call him a metal hedgehog instead of just a robot. 
Maybe there's a lot of robots living peacefully with the society in the future, and they're referred to in politically correct ways the way he's doing now. Maybe he thinks he's a good guy now. Of course, he would jump to that conclusion when he's working with a Mobian. It doesn't really matter what powers Metal Sonic has, because Silver can grab people with telekinesis. So it shouldn't have been written that they had to fight with each other. The only reason he would hold back is if he literally thinks he's just a metal hedgehog instead of a robot. Which again, makes sense because he was working with Shadow. So he thinks he's just a roboticized person. There was roboticization in Lost World, so it is canon to the games. And of course in the future it would be more than just a cyborg thing. Silver accepted a fight from him, but then he runs away from him and he has to race him. So what really happened here? Did Silver be all like, I accept your challenge, and then start running away screaming? And then Knuckles talks to Metal Sonic. Well, that was a stupid line. Of course, he's Eggman's creation. He met him before. Knuckles, I'm not sure how destroying a robot will lead you back to his master. I'm not sure how Knuckles survived that fight, or how neither of them got injured enough to affect the plot. It has to be that Metal Sonic is only fast when he's trying to fly ahead. As symbolized by the fact that he needs a jet engine when Sonic doesn't. So when it comes to fighting up close, Knuckles is going to be better than him because he's fast on his own and stronger. Shadow points something out to Eggman Nega. Knuckles shows up. Once again, demanding to be told where the Master Emerald is and expecting an answer. He goes from laughing like he's going to lie to him, to lying nervously. This is one of the most nonsensical plots in a Sonic game. Shadow finally realizes that it's Eggman Nega. So now for some other scenes. Espio gives Silver another chow and is thanked for it. I guess he decided it was safer to reveal himself and look the way he normally does around Silver because no one's near enough to walk in on the scene. Even though Sonic's fast so he could come over here at any second. Why does he go through the trouble of changing clothes and moving hair dye to return to his normal appearance just for one scene? Eggman Nega tells Silver that he's already gathered more than enough chow to feed the Ifrit, and they're all sealed away in his secret room in the mansion, once again being an idiot by telling Silver his plan. Silver could have gotten himself killed without being lured to a trap. So that's why Silver was looking for a secret room. Silver is about to give up hope, but Espio tells him not to give up and to find that room. So it's not even new for him to give him a pep talk in IDW. Sonic sees a ghost that somehow imitates his shape with evil red eyes, and he decides to run away to no avail. Well, that was pointless. I say somehow because none of the ghosts in Sonic Adventure 2 or Sandopolis could do this. It's pretty overpowered, actually. I guess ghosts are really limited in intelligence, because you think one would take over a country by shapeshifting into the president. I guess it can only be in a very specific location where they have unfinished business. Later on, you see that Tails had the dumbass idea to suggest to Sonic that he split up from him when going to a haunted mansion. John replied much? He doubted that the mansion was actually haunted, but after going through Sonic Adventure 2 in Mystic Mansion, he's pretty stupid to think that when he sees a carbon copy of that mansion. For all I remember, it doesn't look exactly like it, but it's a similar theme. Tails sees a ghost who looks like him and runs away to no avail, and then it changes into Sonic. And Sonic had no problem with beating up someone looking like his little brother either. There is being an anti-hero, and this is just weird even for him. You'd expect this level of pragmatism from Shadow. Of course, he would still do it to just hesitate first. Espio talks to Knuckles, who says that he thinks either Eggman or Shadow has the Master Emerald. Why would he ever think that Shadow stole the Master Emerald? If he hasn't taken it by now, he never will. He thinks he's powerful enough. Espio responds uncharacteristically rudely for no reason even though his character portrait has him with a friendly smile. I thought Espio would provoke a fight with him, but no. He just leaves. That's good. She is acting like a bully here. 
Rouge says that she'll tell Silverworth some chow or if he gives her some chaos emeralds, even though she's looking for just one emerald and has six of them. And I don't know why she'd know where any chow are anyways. Maybe she doesn't. She knows she doesn't, and she's just saying that to trick him into rewarding her, and then she'll just run away. 